Good evening, peers. My name is Pedro Ramirez, and I will be sharing today on Constantine the Great. I decided to share with him with you because I uh, find him relevant to observer of human behavior and an enthusiast in uh, history. I think that y'all will be able to take something out of this and uh, find it very interesting. Frexy born writes in the McGraw-Hill Encyclopedia of World Biography um, that Constantine had told his story in Eusebius that before his encounter with Maxentius, he had seen a cross of light superimposed on the sun with the inscription above, and this you shall conquer. Um, this was prior to a great battle that has effects onto our lives today. Constantine's actions during his rule impact Europe. His actions impact the rituals part people partake, and his decisions impact us today. I will share how he made a mark upon the world, and I will share, I will show what forms of worship he touched that is still touched by many today. And my objective, I hope to uh, have an understanding for all of you to know uh, what. When did Christianity become acceptable to a society? In what ways does it impact us now? What was accepted then? This is Constantius. Uh, he was Constantine the Great's father. He was uh, ruling as Caesar in the area of Gaul, which would be now the area of France, uh, the Netherlands, um, UK. And he uh, ruled for a while, I'll get into what happened in a moment. Elena, this is mother of Constantine. She is, uh, according to many scholars, was a devout Christian prior to any of Constantine the Great's uh, accomplishments. She even was uh, made a pilgr pilgrimage over to the Holy Land, Jerusalem. And this is uh, one of my favorite paintings that I was able to gather for this presentation. This was from Peter Paul Rubens, and he was um, illustrating of Constantine being hailed as Augustus. His father was, as I had said, um, ruler, Caesar, of uh, Gaul, uh, and the, the UK area, France. So he take, goes over. Uh, he's with his father, and uh, they're preparing for a uh, battle to take care of the Picts, the Pictures, and uh, his father falls ill. He becomes hailed as Augustus by his father's troops, and here is a Holy Spirit um, accompanying the scene. Um, Tom B. Jones, University of Minnesota, writes in Encyclopedia Americana that Constantine was no intellectual giant. Yet, he took himself very seriously with regard to what he considered his mission to promote Christianity. Uh, the accomplishments of Constantine the Great was something to be attributed to the societies of them to be called holy. Uh, for many years, there was many paintings where Holy Spirit is leading him in battle into his conquest. This one specifically, the Battle of Milgan Bridge. And uh, this one, again, the Battle of Milgan Bridge. This one's great. Uh, looks pretty graphic. Uh, again, the Holy Spirit helping him. Um, Milgan Bridge. And uh, it was rumored by Eusebius, because it wasn't until later that Eusebius, historian, came out with that, Constantine had told him that he saw a fiery cross in the sky prior to his uh, battle. And uh, this one, yet it's all depicting it all at the same time, all the scenes of what was to occur. Dragon. Okay. This is uh, the Battle of Milvian River, I mean, Milvian Bridge, sorry. And uh, right here, Maxentius, his rival, is uh, overwhelmed. He is drowned at the Tiber River. Constantine, uh, in his accomplishments later on in his life, as he was able to um, 
be so powerful that he was able to unify all of the Roman Empire under his own rulership. And in his uh, desire to be cool, he moved the capital, Rome, which was, you know, in Italy, over to a new location, New Rome, which is now in the modern day um, Istanbul, but the people called it back then Constantinople. He called it New Rome, but the people decided Constantine City, Constantinople. Uh, this was in the 5th century, that later after him, that Emperor Justinian made the Hagia Sophia, Sancta Sophia, uh, was what it was called then. The Arabics, when they took over it, they renamed it uh, Hagia Sophia. Um, that's a very beautiful archaeological, I mean, um, building that's one of the best in the world. So there's very beautiful uh, murals in there. And this is a scene of his city that he constructed, you know, many centuries later, being taken over by the Ottoman Empire. There was no earlier painting of what it what appeared like, but this is the earliest it being taken over by the Ottomans to start their conquest. And uh, 280 AD, Constantine was uh, born, and uh, he was born in the city of uh, Nice now modern-day Serbia area. Um, upon the death of uh, Constantius, his father, his troops held Constantine as Augustus in York in 306. In 312, Constantine invades the Italy portion of Rome. Maxentius was defeated at the Milvian Bridge and drowned at the Tiber River. In 313, Constantine enacts the Edict of Milan. The Edict of Milan was a agreement for the other Augustus of the empire to, to come to an agreement that there will be no more persecution of Christians. There will be no state religion. There would be at all. Everyone can worship whatever they want, kind of like today. Um, sorry. Uh, Vinicius uh, rules in the east and Constantine rules in the west for a decade. Linicius was, Lysanias, sorry, was the uh, co-writer of the Edict of Milan. The, like, it was needed for him, you know, for the other half of the empire to agree to, the, agree to these terms. Um, each ruled together with a distrust of each other. And that's why it leaded into 324. Lysanias, not a really uh, good, um, wasn't really agreeing to the Edict of Milan. He started mistreating Christians. Constantine uh, took advantage of that. He was just looking for an excuse. He marches over to the east and takes over. Uh, he's, uh, Licinius is defeated by Constantine's forces in that year, 324. And Constantine becomes uh, sole emperor of Rome. And 326, Constantine initiates a, the construction of New Rome, uh, Constantinople, which I showed a little bit ago at the site of an ancient Greek port town. Uh, it was very small, but because of him moving the capital of the empire there, then it was growing to be what it is still today. At 337, uh, he passed. He ruled um, all these years. This brings me to my second point. All these years that he ruled, he was allowed the flourishing of Christianity. He allowed for many different types of people, different cultures, to come under Roman uh, infantry and serve with him. He would take in the barbarians, the uh, Germans, and not to discriminate as long as they had an allegiance with them. So there was a mixture of all types of cultures that soon became integrated. It was just all one. The, the Germans, uh, the, those barbaric tribes, they were fond of the, the goddess Yostri. Uh, she was the goddess of fertility. And the rabbit, uh, this bird, uh, these, you know, that can still be seen today. We celebrate Easter. And it was, uh, those, those things were able to mesh into the cultures of all each other, uh, everyone's societies in the, in the Europe. The, um, the Northern Europeans, the Scandinavians, uh, all of them had a fascination, well, tree worship. They worshipped trees, they would put up on, on the sides of their barns to keep away demons. 
it was the Germans later on that started in that, uh, the process of decorating them with little wipers, I mean pyramids of wood, and then uh, as time goes by, it becomes two and one, decorating the tree, and uh, that's how we see that getting mixed around. The Romans themselves, uh, the gift giving, that, that was prior to uh, Christmas. Gift giving was already being done prior to Christmas being created and by the Romans uh, celebrating uh, set the goddess of uh, Saturn and uh, they would give gifts. So all of those things, they were to borrow and assimilate each other's cultures. Uh, Constantine's action permitted cultures to be able to assimilate each other's rituals. Constantine was connected to the way people celebrated them. In the east of the empire, people would, uh, had chosen their Christmas Day Epiphany um, as January 6th. That's when their children would receive gifts. And uh, January 25th was the west, how they chose for the, their Christmas. And there it housed those 12 days. That's how we end up with 12 days of Christmas. Uh, I will bring now to a sec another third point of how this impacts us now. <laughs> Every year, societies worldwide partake in the celebrations that were of the time of Constantine. Constantine is connected to the way people celebrate now. In Japan, Christianity is a minority. People do gift giving over there. Christmas. This has spread all over the world. Uh, it is everywhere. South America and, and completely every single part of the globe has, is familiar with this ritual that comes from this land of Constantine. And uh, I'd like to summarize that, I'd like to point out that his actions that he did with all his time as ruler, all of those things that he was able to mix in, you, as I showed with uh, allowing people to celebrate in the ways that they choose to. All of that comes back to us, and it impacts us, impacts us now, and we are able to, um, we are able now to have an appreciation to what our roots are and our pastimes of rituals. Christopher Bush Coleman, professor of history at Butler College in Indianapolis, Indiana, writes in Constantine the Great and Christianity that it gains peculiar interest when one considers that Constantine was perhaps the greatest promoter of the, that of the revolution in which the Christian church gained the mastery of the Roman and medieval mind, and that the Constantinian legends were among the notable products of the greatest revolutions in European history. Uh, my sources were McGraw-Hill, Encyclopedia of World Biography, um, uh, Coleman, Christopher Bush, uh, when the Constantine the Great Christianity, and Encyclopedia of, of America. Thank you very much.